Thank you very much, and thanks for coming. That's yeah, that's the gala dinner was probably very good for yesterday. Uh, okay, first of all, just to to start, my name is Makola. I'm product manager in the company developing a software uh, for location data visualization and analysis. And uh, what I would be talking about today is actually, you know, probably for all of us is quite a common and the basic things, but for me as a the guy who actually studied GIS by, by, our, by, by, by myself, it was quite hard to start working with all the methods and all the parameters that are commonly used in uh, geospatial industry. Therefore, uh, at the beginning of learning GIS and then while developing the product, I tried to look into some details and try to go deeper and find if there are any ways to make the, uh, like, the starting point a bit easier for newcomers to the industry. Uh, yeah, just so probably the presentation would be like separated into a couple of blocks. I would stay in a couple in a couple of like slides for each block and share my ideas, my thoughts, and it would be great if we just continue as a discussion there. And also there are some uh, like solutions that we provide for for some like parameters. Therefore, uh, in addition, I just also. To, to add that we do uh, collaborate a lot with universities and we start some projects within the universities in Ukraine therefore some ideas here presented could be then used as a project there at the universities. Okay, so first of all, I would start with the styling. That's probably the easiest thing that everybody is facing every day, but unfortunately it does not work very well for a lot of cases. And what was like the, the, the milestone when I just decided to start working with it, it was the release for the Kepler GL, is the Uber visualization platform, and in 2018, the Kepler GL won the award for the best tool for data visualization and analysis. It was in New York City, it was so great, etc. But when I started to work with it, I found that for like quant quantitative data visualization, they provide only two approaches, that quantize and quantile approach. Just to remind how it works. Uh, for the uh, quantile approach, you're just putting all the features with all the values that you've got in your data set into like, for example, five classes. And for each class, you define the, the same or pretty much the same number of features. Therefore, you may see that for the, like for the fifth class, uh, the values for the features are completely different starting like from the like 60,000 to almost like 200,000 something. So its approach not very good for working with like highly skewed data. Uh, it may work if uh, there are no such big outliers, but still, you know, there are some like it's not very well worked with with a lot of uh, with a lot of data sets. The second approach is quantize or equal interval. I believe it's even worse because what you got here is that you're just separating your values frame into the equal columns. Therefore, you may just got some columns where there are almost no values at all. So you may not see any patterns in your data. Therefore, there was a reasonable question. Maybe the data sets are pretty much good for such kind of visualization. So that was the next step to check how actually the data is distributed. And for that, I used the ArcGIS uh, Open Data uh, Hub. So they do provide API to access the basic information about all the data sets that are stored in the ArcGIS. Uh, I just grabbed the information about 500,000 columns with quantitative data and then tried to find whether it is close to the uniform distribution using the uh, variance parameters, comparing to the variance parameters in the, uni in the uniform distribution. And you may see here that actually it's in percentage. So uh, the difference between the real values for the variance, comparing to the variance if it is an equal distribution, uh, is extremely huge, starting like from this red line. So only the data sets below this line to the left are could be saying that they've got the uh, uniform distribution and the equal interval approach could be used for them. For all other data, this approach would not work at all. 
Therefore, uh, I believe we could say that equal interval approach is definitely not the one that should be used as a default parameter. Uh, the second stage was to, ta to, tra to check whether the uh, quantile approach would work. So we found uh, the information about the standard deviation between the, uh, within these columns with quantitative data. And uh, we compare the, uh, this, the, the standard deviation values comparing to the minimum and maximum values. Therefore, we found that only for this like, area, for the data sets, you could use actually the uh, quantile approach because for all other data sets and for all other columns, uh, it would be the outliers in this skewed data. Therefore, the approach would not work very well at all. So at this moment, I must say that both quantile and quantize approach should not be used at all. I mean, maybe it's for some just particular cases, but definitely not for the default parameters. So let's move from the Kepler GL to other software that's more common for us. So I found that for QGS, it's still the equal interval uh, as a default parameter for styling. And I'm just curious when you're just first time opening the QGS, you've got a lot of buttons there and then you're trying to create some map and wow, you're creating a map, it's beautiful, but you do not think that you should change some mode here to get some valuable results because there are good actually classification methods there. For example, Jenks natural breaks, which is uh, actually the default parameter in ArcGIS online and in our product. I believe if you are using if you have to use just one parameter, Genx natural breaks would be the best option for that because it allows you to show some NMLs within your data set and then like, it's still the best one comparing to others. Uh, just for the couple of other products, for Carta, that's the quantile approach. For GeoDA, that's completely crazy. You need to create the map just choosing the parameter so there is no default option. Uh, yeah, and speaking about Carta, I'm not sure if there is somebody from Carta here. Okay, but they're quite good at it uh, because they moved a bit further. So what they developed, they actually tried to, uh, to understand the distribution type. So that's the next level for the data visualization. So you actually do not need to select the classifier by yourself. What they used is the Aegis uh, uh, approach for distribution classification. Uh, they made it on their SQL interface, so yeah, that's it works on the Postgres, uh, which allows you to understand which data distribution among your like histogram. Therefore, for each of the data types, they provided actually the method to visualize and to uh, classify the histogram. It works pretty well, but there are some uh, problems in this method because the methods what de was developed for the social researches and it works mostly with ordinal data. Uh, therefore, it's uh, created for the surveys when you got marks, for example, from one to seven. So it does not work with real data sets. It does not work with data sets with like uh, NMLs, uh, outliers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But still, it's probably the best current solution that I've seen in the market. Uh, so, yeah, they know about their disadvantages. They just wrote here in the GitHub directly. All the links are valid, so probably you should check and see how it works. Uh, therefore, uh, my suggestion at this moment is actually to move further and to initiate the project which would take into account uh, as well as the form of the histogram also, the, uh, oh, it should work for some, okay, yeah, the, for the outliers, this actually could be used, uh, at, and it was already used for this research, and of course, the size of the data sets, because it's extremely important, you could not work with just ordinal data, and that's probably what we, I would like to discuss, and that's the project that I would initiate, and we are already starting with students to work on, and uh, it would be great if anyone would be interested in joining us to just to move on and create uh, actually a solution that would uh, like downgrade the the level of entrance to the location intelligence industry. Uh, yeah, the next part would be about the analysis. That's mostly for the geostatistical analysis and. 
it's even getting worse, I think, because when you're just starting work with uh, better analysis, for example, the nearest neighbor index, what you need is to define the area of distribution because it's extremely sensitive to this data. And uh, as you may see, for a lot of uh, instruments, there is default parameters as a B-box, for example, in nearest neighbor analysis in QGS, there is no even other input for the area, and that's actually a bit awkward. Uh, for the R package spatial echo, there is a B-box or convex hull, uh, and for the ArcGIS is also B-box, but there is an area of op optional input, so you may include the real area of the territory of distribution. Uh, but yeah, that's the our product, so we added a couple of other options, and I would just, at the next slide, I would under, I would try to, to show you what's the point, actually, of using other parameters and defaults. Here is a normalized uh, like visualization for the real area of distribution based on countries, so the blue one is the normalized real area uh, of countries. The orange one you may see is the area of the convex hull around the features that are randomly distributed within the country. And here you may see also the B box for each country. So the difference is extremely significant and for some cases, some, for some countries, uh, the area for the bounding box is like five times bigger than the real area of the territory. So what uh, what's actually the influence for that. Uh, here is the uh, nearest neighbor index for the randomly distributed points. And it, if it is randomly distributed, you're expecting that it would be like the nearest neighbor index close to one because it means that uh, the features are randomly distributed. And here you can see the blue points which shows that if you're using the real area parameter, it actually shows our hypothesis. But if you're using other default parameters, you may get even the change of distribution type. So for all these features, having the randomly distributed points within the territory, you would get the result for clustering distribution. So that's a uh, complete different results, and I believe for this case, it's better not to use analysis at all because you've got a extremely different results. It's, it's not about some small changes, it's about completely different the distribution type. Uh, so for that reason, we uh, think that it would be great to integrate uh, some open data to, for people that uh, could be used as an area input, because we should not uh, let people down upload or find somebody, some vector from their area of distribution because actually people from non-JS does not know where to get this vector. Therefore, our solution is to use the OpenStreetMap and to use this overpass query which allows you to get the features that are surrounding your data set. For example, you've got your data set, you could calculate the centroid of the data set and the user does not know it. And then using this uh, like this query, you would get the information about all the features that are surrounding the, uh, the user's data sets. For example, like this, when you're sharing, uh, running this query in Overpass Turbo with the parameters of the some centroid, you are receiving information about all the features which are surrounding this feature. Therefore, there is small, like, uh, area in key regions and the whole region and then the whole country. So it could be used as a like default parameters for the analysis and it may help to avoid this mistake when people are using some other default parameters, bounding box or convex hull. Uh, so probably I believe that would be the best solution because uh, the OpenStreetMap data making and it's becoming better and better. Therefore, I, I'm sure that for the future, it would probably be used for all the cases. Uh, about distance, a couple of words. Um, here is also the uh, comparison of default parameters used uh, in measuring distances. First of all, for the analysis, because for better analysis, the distance is 
quite significant value and for a lot of tools uh, you're using just the CRS unit. For example, if you run the network, the nearest neighbor analysis in QGS, you would get the distance in degrees. So yeah, that's kind of strange. Uh, and you've got a absolutely different results. So for using that, you have to understand how to use the like local coordinates or UTM zones, etc. But that's like the GS background. So we do not want our users go deep into GS. Uh, and also, for example, the GODA tool, which is commonly used and which is known as the data analysis tool, they are using the great cycle distance. Uh, but we think that Winsent distance would be the best option because it's much more uh, better and more accurate the great cycle. Distance here is the great article uh, comparing different approaches for measuring distances. So, yeah, I believe you should check and find that, for example, for the uh, comparison great cycle and geodesics, which is Vincent distance, it could be like 18 kilometers in the uh, equator. So, for the, uh, for the half of the planet distances. Uh, it may, it's not just the question for the accuracy of distances because we have a couple of uh, cases, ideas. We checked that it actually influences the nearest neighbor distances. It means that if you're using different approach, you would get different neighbors. Therefore, the statistical analysis like local Moran's eye or Gettys or GI star, you may get absolutely different results because the analysis are different comparing to uh, the real, actually, neighbors for, for, this, for this case. Uh, and for that, uh, the friend of mine, our developer, created a library which is open, open sourced and it runs the nearest neighbor distance based on the Vincenti formula and it runs on the GPU as well as CPU, but it's extremely fast, so feel free to check the article and to use our rep repository in our a library to work with uh, distances and to implement it into your solution, especially in the analysis. Uh, and probably the last one, which is also kind of ideas and thoughts, that's the base maps. Uh, what I mean by base maps and about the default parameters, uh, actually we are frequently using the basic styling for the base maps, like the dark mode, which, which is beautiful, or watercolor, which was recently added to ArcGIS. Uh, but yeah, still there is basic positron, topography, etc., etc. There is no like subject-specific base maps. There are just a couple of them. Yeah, they exist. That's, for example, open cycle map, which is definitely styled more for uh, for cyclists, for travelers, etc. Uh, definitely base maps for navigation and probably for some humanitarian needs. But what I'm talking about is that actually our like customers and our clients want to see the base map completely different. They want to see the base map uh, based on their needs. So, for example, if they are need the base map for the retail industry, there is no need to show all the features there that we are seeing on the Google Maps or on OpenStreetMap. Uh, so, it's quite easy to start changing it uh, because, for example, the open map tile schema allows you to work uh, with almost every single object from the open street map. So all, there are like a layers, a bunch of layers there. And for example, for points of interest, you are getting the access to the open street map data with the following text. As, as you may know, the immunity tag, for example, is just huge. You may use it for any type of data from OpenStreetMap. And here is the uh, like the text that could be used in the open map tile schema. So for example, we are now working on the retail base map, so it would be definitely starting from the land use commercial, and then all the points of interest that are close to the businesses that we are working with. And if you are not satisfied with open map tile schema, which uh, do not provide access to all the tags, I recommend you to move further and to work with the OpenStreetMap database, database directly. So open, open also the open map tiles provide the actually the queries to, to the OpenStreetMap database when you could even change the uh, 
uh, zoom level for showing s different objects and you could also uh, work with much more information from the OpenStreetMap. So if you're an OpenStreetMap contributor, you know that there are tons of text starting from the direction for the bench and uh, moving to the buildings, etc. And, and the land use. Uh, even if you're not satisfied with open map tiles, you could work with Mapbox schema, so they also like provide such services. Therefore, it would be probably the next, uh, I believe, the next level of customization of location intelligence tool, tools because of the needs of the customers. Just to sum up, uh, for the each topic, I believe for this tile, we just do not have to use the quantile and quantize approach because it doesn't work at all. Uh, for the analysis, it's better to use uh, or to try to guess which, which area of distribution are for the like, people's data set because they do not know where to get the vectors usually. They do not know how to work with shape files and geo packages. Uh, for the distance, uh, for now, the hardware is good enough to work with the Vincenti formula, which is definitely more harder to start working than the great cycle. And it would probably fix all the cases around the world, probably not for geodet geodetic like accuracy, but for the spatial patterns for sure. Uh, for the base maps, I'm sure that water color is not exciting anymore. So we should move further and create subject specific uh, base maps. And uh, I just missed that uh, while I was talking about styling, I mentioned the data set which is, gets information for 500,000 uh, columns with quantitative data. It's also open sourced. I just uh, put it also on the GitHub. Uh, it's lack of README, but we would fix it and I'm sure that all this information would be also uh, added to the repository and probably some more additional analysis. Uh, here are some important links and interesting things to read. So thanks for your attention. Thanks for coming today in the morning because you know it was hard after the gala dinner. Thanks for you. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Mikola. We've got time for a few questions. Any questions? No questions? There's one. Uh, did you compare the Vincenti also with the Haversign formula? If I know it's yeah. more accurate, but I don't know if you have some numbers on that. Yeah, thanks. Actually, we, we do not compare that. So probably I, I've seen that uh, that, uh, that presentation and that article that we're comparing different distances, it also mentioned that formula, but we just stopped at the Vincenti. So um, yeah, no. So there is no comparison. Uh, yeah, maybe just to add, we were focusing on the GPU uh, running the algorithm. So probably for the GPU um, environment, it was easier to start with Vincenti because, as far as I know, it's uh, there is a loop to get the more precise result, but still it could be run on GPUs, uh, and probably that was the reason we just focus on that. Thanks. Yeah, the Vincenti is fast, uh, better, more accurate, as far as I heard. Questions? All right, in that case, thank you very much again. And um, we have a 30 minutes break now. The uh, next sessions will start back here in this room at 1100 sharp. Thanks.